Life can be fast and sometimes hard, but finding inner peace and staying positive is really important. Buddhism teaches us valuable lessons that can help us deal with life's challenges. This video will take a closer look at these teachings, acting as a guide for anyone who wants to stay calm and positive no matter what comes their way. Step 1. Stay positive. Buddhism teaches us that the mind is a powerful force that shapes our reality. Staying positive begins with cultivating mindfulness, a heightened awareness of our thoughts and emotions. The Buddha emphasized the significance of right thinking, encouraging followers to focus on the present moment rather than dwelling on the past or anxiously anticipating the future. Life is like a river, always flowing, never stopping. In the teachings of Buddhism, there's a powerful idea, staying positive through mindfulness. Imagine your mind as a garden, what you plant there will grow. If you plant seeds of positivity, your mental garden will bloom with joy. The Buddha, a wise teacher, said that the mind is the master of everything. It shapes how we see the world. Staying positive begins with paying attention to our thoughts, feelings, and actions. This is what Buddhists call mindfulness. Mindfulness is like having a superpower. It means being aware of the present moment, not dwelling on the past or worrying about the future. Think about a beautiful sunset, when you fully appreciate it, you're practicing mindfulness. It's about being where you are, not lost in thoughts that drag you down. Negativity often creeps in when we let our minds wander. Maybe you're thinking about a mistake you made yesterday or worrying about what might happen tomorrow. Mindfulness teaches us to anchor ourselves in the now and to appreciate what's happening right in front of us. Imagine you're eating a delicious meal Instead of rushing through it, you savor each bite. You notice the flavors, the textures, and how the food nourishes your body. This is mindfulness in action. When we're fully present, we can enjoy the simple things that bring us joy. Staying positive doesn't mean ignoring problems. It means facing them with a clear and focused mind. Mindfulness is a tool that helps us deal with challenges without letting them overwhelm us. By staying present and positive, we cultivate a mindset that can turn obstacles into opportunities for growth. So how can you start practicing mindfulness? It's simpler than you might think. Take a moment each day to pause and breathe. Close your eyes and feel the air filling your lungs. Then, slowly, exhale. Let go of tension with each breath. Pay attention to the sensations in your body. As you go about your day, try to be fully present in whatever you're doing whether it's washing dishes, walking, or talking to a friend. Give it your full attention. Notice the details that often go unnoticed. This practice gradually transforms your mind, making positivity a natural part of your everyday experience. Staying positive through mindfulness is like tending to the garden of your mind. As you nurture seeds of positivity, your mental landscape blossoms with gratitude and joy. The journey begins with a single step, a step into the present moment where the power to shape your happiness resides. Step two, be thankful for things. Gratitude is a potent antidote to negativity. In Buddhism, the practice of appreciation extends beyond material possessions to encompass the interconnectedness of all things. The Buddha spoke of gratitude as a transformative force that can lead to a profound shift in our perception of life. Expressing gratitude is not merely a social nicety, but a spiritual practice. In Buddhism, the act of acknowledging and appreciating the positive aspects of our lives fosters contentment. This chapter delves into the various ways in which one can incorporate gratitude into daily life, from keeping a gratitude journal to practicing mindful thankfulness. You wake up in the morning, and the first thing you do is smile. Not because everything in your life is perfect, but because you're grateful for the simple fact that you have a new day ahead. This is the essence of gratitude, a powerful practice rooted in Buddhist teachings. Gratitude is like a magic potion for the heart. It's about appreciating what you have instead of focusing on what's missing. The Buddha said that a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. When we're thankful, we open our hearts to the abundance that already exists in our lives. In the busy hustle of daily life, it's easy to overlook the small wonders that surround us, the warmth of sunlight, the gentle breeze, 
or the laughter of a friend. These are treasures often taken for granted. Gratitude invites us to pause and recognize the beauty in the ordinary. You might wonder, how do you cultivate gratitude? It starts with a shift in perspective. Instead of dwelling on what you lack, focus on what you have. Take a moment each day to reflect on the things you're grateful for. It could be as simple as a hot cup of tea, a kind gesture, or the roof over your head. The practice of keeping a gratitude journal is a wonderful way to make gratitude a daily habit. At the end of each day, write down three things you're thankful for. It could be a loving family, good health, or the opportunity to learn something new. As you do this, you'll find that your outlook on life begins to change. Gratitude isn't just about appreciating the positive aspects of life, it's also about acknowledging the challenges. Even in difficult times, there's something to be grateful for a lesson learned, inner strength discovered, or the support of others. It's a perspective that transforms hardships into opportunities for growth. Expressing gratitude isn't limited to words. Actions speak volumes. Show appreciation to the people around you. A simple thank you can brighten someone's day. The more you express gratitude, the more you'll notice the positive impact it has not only on others, but on your well-being. Gratitude is a thread that weaves joy into the fabric of our existence. It reminds us that every moment is a gift, and within that gift, there's something to be grateful for. As you embrace the practice of gratitude, you'll discover a profound shift in your heart, a shift towards a more positive and fulfilling life. Step three, speak nicely to yourself. The words we speak to ourselves carry immense power. Buddhism teaches us the importance of self-compassion, recognizing that we are all imperfect beings on a journey of self-discovery. Harsh self-criticism only serves to reinforce negative thought patterns and hinder personal growth. Imagine you have a friend who is always encouraging, understanding, and kind. This friend supports you through thick and thin, never criticizing, but offering words of comfort and love. Now, what if I told you that this friend could be you? In the teachings of Buddhism, there's a powerful lesson about the way we speak to ourselves. It's called self-compassion, and it's like being a good friend to yourself. The Buddha emphasized the importance of right speech, not only in our interactions with others, but also in the way we talk to ourselves. Think about the words you use when describing yourself. Are they uplifting? or do they tend to be critical? Buddhism teaches us that the language we use internally shapes our perception of ourselves and the world around us. Self-compassion means treating ourselves with the same kindness and understanding that we would offer to a friend. It's acknowledging that we're not perfect, but that imperfection is part of being human. When we make a mistake, instead of berating ourselves, we can say, it's okay, everyone makes mistakes, Start by paying attention to your inner dialogue. Notice when you're being self-critical and gently redirect those thoughts. Imagine you're talking to a friend. Would you say the same things to them that you say to yourself? Another way to practice self-compassion is through affirmations. These are positive statements that you repeat to yourself. For example, you might say, I am worthy of love and happiness, or I am capable and strong. By consistently reinforcing positive messages, you gradually reshape your inner narrative. Meditation is a powerful tool in cultivating self-compassion. Take a few minutes each day to sit quietly, focus on your breath, and let go of self-judgment. As you create a space of peace within, you'll find that self-compassion naturally blossoms. Being kind to yourself doesn't mean ignoring areas where you can improve. It means approaching self-improvement with love and encouragement rather than criticism. When you treat yourself with compassion, you create a foundation of inner strength that empowers you to face life's challenges with resilience and grace. In the grand symphony of life, your relationship with yourself is a crucial note. By embracing the art of self-compassion, you become not only your own best friend, but also a source of unwavering support on your journey towards positivity and inner peace. Step four, keep your body healthy the temple of the soul. In the pursuit of inner peace, the body is not separate from the mind. Buddhism places great emphasis on caring for the body as a means of cultivating a harmonious and balanced life. 
This involves not only physical health but also mental and emotional well-being. Imagine your body as a beautiful temple, a sacred place that houses your spirit. In the teachings of Buddhism, caring for this temple is seen as essential for a balanced and harmonious life. It's not just about how you look on the outside, but about nurturing the well-being of your entire being, mind, body and soul. The Buddha taught us that our bodies are a gift, a precious vessel that allows us to experience life. To honor this gift, we need to take care of it. When your body is healthy, it becomes a supportive companion on your journey, allowing you to engage in the world around you fully. Caring for your body involves more than just what you eat or how much you exercise, though those are important aspects. It's also about the thoughts you feed your mind, the rest you give your body, and the love you shower upon yourself. It's a holistic approach that recognizes the interconnectedness of all aspects of your being. Let's start with the basics, nutrition. Just as you wouldn't fill a sacred temple with unhealthy offerings, you shouldn't fill your body with food that doesn't nourish it. This doesn't mean you can't enjoy your favorite treats, but it's about finding a balance that honors your body's needs. Exercise is another way to honor your body. It doesn't have to be intense workouts, even a gentle walk or stretching can do wonders. Movement not only keeps your body in good shape, but also has a profound impact on your mood and mental well-being. But it's not just about what you do, it's also about how you rest. Your body needs time to recharge, just like a temple needs moments of silence. Sleep is a crucial part of this. When you allow your body to rest, you're allowing it to heal and rejuvenate. Beyond physical care, the Buddha spoke about the importance of mental well-being. Just as negative thoughts can create turmoil in the mind, a peaceful mind contributes to a healthy body. Practices like meditation and mindfulness are like gentle whispers to the soul, bringing tranquility to the entire temple. Your body is the canvas on which experiences are painted. By treating it with respect and care, you create a foundation for a positive and fulfilling life. The Buddha's wisdom encourages us to see our bodies not as burdens, but as magnificent temples worthy of love, attention, and gentle care that nourishes the spirit within. Step five, try new things embracing change and growth. Life is a dynamic journey and stagnation is antithetical to the principles of Buddhism. Embracing change and cultivating a mindset of continual growth is fundamental to staying positive and open to the myriad possibilities life offers. Life is an adventure, a journey full of twists and turns. In the teachings of Buddhism, there's a call to embrace this adventure fully, to step out of our comfort zones and try new things. This isn't just about novelty, it's about a mindset that welcomes change and growth. Think of life as a vast playground. When you try new things, you're like a child exploring different corners of this playground, discovering hidden treasures and gaining new experiences. The Buddha encouraged his followers to be open-minded, to be like a traveler unafraid of the unknown. One key idea in Buddhism is impermanence, the understanding that everything is always changing. Seasons change, days turn into nights, and so do our circumstances. Embracing this reality rather than resisting it is a powerful way to stay positive. Trying new things doesn't mean leaping into the unknown without a safety net. It's about being curious, about being willing to learn and grow. Maybe it's trying a new hobby, exploring a different type of cuisine, or even considering a new perspective on life. Each small step outside your comfort zone is a step toward personal evolution. Imagine a tree that stands tall in a forest. If it refuses to sway with the wind, it might break. But if it bends and dances with the breeze, it not only survives, but thrives. Life's winds are like the challenges we face, and the ability to bend and adapt is the key to staying positive amid change. Sometimes, fear holds us back from trying new things. We worry about what might go wrong or how others will perceive us. Buddhism encourages us to face these fears with courage. It teaches us that growth happens when we step into the discomfort and discover our strength. The mindset of trying new things is not just about external exploration. It's also about inner growth. Maybe it's exploring new aspects of yourself, facing fears 
or breaking free from self-imposed limitations. This journey of self-discovery is a path toward a more authentic and positive version of yourself. By embracing change and willingly trying new things, you add vibrant pages to this book, creating a story that is uniquely yours. The Buddhist wisdom whispers, don't be afraid to dance with the unknown, for it is in the dance that you discover the beauty of the ever unfolding journey. Step six, make achievable goals the middle path to success. Setting. Goals is an inherent part of human nature, but Buddhism offers a unique perspective on goal setting, the middle path. A fundamental concept in Buddhist philosophy guides individuals towards setting realistic and attainable goals that align with their deeper aspirations. Imagine you are on a journey and you have a map. On this map, there are big destinations and smaller milestones along the way. This is a bit like life, where setting achievable goals is like charting your course on this journey. In Buddhism, the idea of making achievable goals is rooted in the concept of the middle path. A balanced approach to succeed, the Buddha talked about finding balance in all aspects of life. It's not about extremes, neither pushing too hard nor becoming complacent. Making achievable goals is like walking this middle path. It's about setting realistic targets that challenge you, but are also within your reach. Think of a staircase. Each step represents a goal. If the steps are too big, you might stumble, but if they're too small, you might not feel challenged. Making achievable goals is about finding the right size steps that lead you toward your destination without overwhelming you. Consider a tree growing tall. It starts as a tiny seed, and with each day it reaches a bit higher. Similarly, your goals can be like seeds and small yet filled with potential. As you achieve them, you grow, just like the tree stretching toward the sky. The middle path is about steady progress. Sometimes we set goals that are too ambitious and when we can't reach them, we feel disheartened. The Buddha encourages us to be patient with ourselves. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. Achievable goals are like markers along the marathon route, reminding you of the progress you're making. Setting achievable goals is not just about the destination, it's about the journey. It's about the joy of learning, growing, and becoming a better version of yourself. The Buddha's wisdom teaches us that success is not just reaching the mountain top, it's appreciating the beauty of the climb. Practical steps can help you set achievable goals. Start by breaking down big tasks into smaller manageable steps. Celebrate each small victory along the way. This not only boosts your confidence, but also makes the journey more enjoyable. The middle path philosophy is a gentle reminder to find balance in your aspirations. It's about setting goals that inspire you to reach higher and allow you to savor the process. By walking this middle path, you cultivate a mindset of patience, resilience, and a positive outlook on your journey through life. Step seven, do things that make you feel happy and positive. In the pursuit of a positive and fulfilling life, engaging in activities that bring joy and satisfaction is crucial. Buddhism advocates for the nourishment of the soul through mindful and intentional actions that align with one's values and aspirations. Imagine life as a banquet, and each day is an opportunity to choose the dishes that bring joy to your soul. In Buddhism, the concept of doing things that make you feel happy and positive is like selecting the most delightful flavors for your inner well-being. It's about consciously nourishing your soul with activities that uplift and inspire you. The Buddha spoke of the right livelihood, emphasizing the importance of engaging in work and activities that contribute positively to your overall well-being. Doing things that make you happy is not a luxury but a fundamental aspect of a fulfilling life. It's about choosing activities that resonate with your true self, aligning with your values and passions. Consider your favorite hobby or a pastime that brings a smile to your face. It could be painting, playing music, reading, or simply taking a stroll in nature. These activities are not just leisure. They are essential ingredients in the recipe for a happy and positive life. Life can be demanding with responsibilities and challenges, but amidst it all, finding time for activities that bring joy is crucial. The Buddhist teachings guide us to create a balance between our daily duties 
and moments of self-nourishment. By doing things that make you happy, you replenish your energy and cultivate a reservoir of positivity. It's easy to get caught up in the routine of life and forget to prioritize activities that bring genuine happiness. This chapter encourages you to reflect on what truly makes your heart sing, whether it's spending time with loved ones, pursuing a creative endeavor, or simply enjoying a quiet moment of solitude. These are the ingredients that infuse your life with positivity. The practice of doing things that make you happy is not selfish. It's an act of self-love. When you prioritize your well-being, you become better equipped to navigate life's challenges. The Buddha's wisdom teaches us that happiness is not an external pursuit, but an internal state of being cultivated through intentional and mindful living. Practical steps can help you incorporate more joy into your life, create a list of activities that bring you happiness, and make a commitment to engage in them regularly. Surround yourself with people who uplift and support you. By consciously choosing joy, you contribute to a positive and harmonious atmosphere, not only within yourself, but also in the world around you. In the grand symphony of life, doing things that make you feel happy and positive is like playing a beautiful melody that resonates with the deepest parts of your being. The Buddhist teachings guide us to savor the richness of these moments, recognizing that true happiness is not found in the pursuit of external achievements, but in the simple and profound act of doing things that nourish the soul.